and oh, we're not about that. Kind of plays into like the lesbian aspects of vampirism. I know I shouldn't really be buying like multiple editions of books, especially given the fact that I have no more shelf space. However, I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm gonna do it anyway. Hey besties, it's Joel, and today I'm going to be talking about some of the classics that I want to read in the future. I hope you're doing very well and that you're taking care of yourself, especially in the lead up to the end of the year. We've got to make sure we keep that momentum going. If you've yet to take a drink of water, please do so because we've got to remain hydrated. And if you've yet to check out my Instagram nor my Twitter, I would highly recommend you go check those out as well because I post extra bookish content that you're not gonna see here. So today, yeah, I really want to talk about classics because I am doing a lot of like research lately into like 18th century and medievalist literature and it's kind of got me wanting to read classics. I don't read classics as much purely because of the fact that I pretty much prefer modern fiction and there's always this kind of elitism surrounding the classics and also a lot of the times the canon that is taught within education and within like universities are very much white cis hat and oh, we're not about that. But there's work being done through the Lit and Colour movement with the Renny Me Trust and Penguin, there's the Black Curriculum, and there's also Disrupt Texts, which is about acknowledging the classics and trying to expand the canon as a whole, which is a very, very, like, exciting thing to go into. And I think when I eventually do my master's thesis and PhD, uh, I really want to, like, do something about that, do something about, like, acknowledging the works by marginalised people within the 18th to the 21st centuries and try and expand the canon as a whole. But apart from that, I thought I'd wear like this blazer today because we're talking about the classics So we need to dress a bit posh, you know, um, I'm kidding But this blazer you might recognize is the one that I wore to my graduation which took place a couple of weeks ago I it was a surreal experience to say the least wearing like a cap and gown and walking around It felt very much like a magical fantasy like I was in like a magical school And I was about to like do stuff like really cool things and I got to meet Alan Titchmarsh and shake his hand That was a weird thing, but it was pretty awesome, but you might also be asking from some of the graduation photos that I'm showing you, Joel, you have some really nice jewellery on, where did you get it from? Well, friends, they were very kindly gifted by the sponsor of today's video, Ana Luisa. Ana Luisa is a brand that I have been following for quite some time now, and also wearing ever since our bestie and also fellow late night book club host, Noelle, did their collaboration with Ana Luisa and created the Noelle necklace, which I have here. I've been wearing this necklace literally ever since I first got it and it's just super beautiful and so I was very interested in getting more pieces from Ana Luisa and when they offered to partner with me and collaborate with me further I was like I'm gonna do this because I really like the fact that they're sustainable that they're carbon neutral and water neutral and they really make sure that they're trying their best for the environment and it's just a, a jewelry brand that I feel like I can support so to help style me for my graduation and for my everyday wear I chose three pieces of jewelry that I think would have really helped and I'm wearing them all today so I can show you. So the very first one that I would like to tell you about is this Miche gemstone necklace which I'll come up and show you now. So it looks like this. Um, I find it to be really beautiful. The green gemstone is an aventurine but every time I've shown it to people they think it's jade and to all of those who have read the Green Bone Saga by Fonda Lee, you know, I just feel ultra powerful whilst wearing this because if I do think it's a piece of jade, you know, that's some magic that I can have. Also we have this Adam Ball chain which I think is also really nice. I haven't really worn gold chains before and I was a bit like apprehensive about wearing this but once I started pairing it with like outfits and coming up with ideas with how to wear it I've just loved it. It's like now one of my like, staple pieces of jewelry like if I don't wear this necklace I will probably wear this chain. The final thing that I got was this mecha off-white ring. It is an adjustable ring so you can like adjust it by here but I also always put it on my pinky because it just hugs my pinky really nicely and and so if you'd like to browse the wonderful selection that Ana Luisa offers, you can go to shop.analuisa.com forward slash fictional fates and use code fictional fates 10 in order to get 10% off any order. Their pieces start at $39 and I'm sure you'll be able to find something that is right for you because they have a vast selection of things that are pretty awesome. Also, be sure to check out the wonderful photos that I took with this jewelry on Instagram because they're literally amazing and I'm really proud of how they turned out and so you can check them out there. Okay, immediately getting into the classics now. The 
very first one is one that is a precursor to one of my favourite classics of all time, which is Dracula. And so we have Sheridan Le Fanu's In a Glass Darkly, which is basically like a collection of her fiction and her short stories, but the one in particular that I'm really, really excited to read, Carmilla, which is like the very last story in this book. I'm very excited to read Carmilla. Again, it's the precursor to Dracula, and I feel like Carmilla, from what my friends have said, just speaks so many volumes about just kind of like the early notions of vampirism. I just feel like it's gonna be super cool to read it and also read more from like female classic novelists of the period. I also feel like this kind of gothic notion that we're getting. I, I just love the gothic. I think I mentioned this in the previous video, but the gothic is literally one of my favorite kind of like genres. It just works. It works super well, but also you can, you can emphasize gothic in a multitude of different ways. You can have gothic in dark academia. You can have gothic in other places. And I just find that Camilla will literally like be amazing. And so Camilla follows a young woman who is being stalked and preyed upon by a female vampire. And this kind of plays into like the lesbian aspects of vampirism, whilst also apparently the novella doesn't really comment on like homosexuality as being antagonistic or bad, leaving it open to interpretation. And so I'm really liking that because eventually I do want to write a vampire gothic novel, I think. Again, I kind of want to make it Dark Academia, but I feel like I need to also expand my range and not stick to just Dark Academia as a whole. But Carmilla does sound like a fantastic novella to read, but also I feel like I'm going to read it pretty soon anyways, because especially with uh, Halloween coming up, I feel like it'd be a great short story to read then. The next classic book of literature that I want to read, and it's actually one that I'm consuming at the moment for my course, is Alfred Tennyson's Idols of the King, and this is basically a piece of Arthurian literature. So Alfred Lord Tennyson basically took, uh, what the fuck's his name? So Alfred Lord Tennyson basically took Sir Thomas Mallory's Le Mort de Arthur and it basically rewrote some of it um, for himself. And there's definitely like a few key differences between Le Mort de Arthur and Idols of the King, but it basically follows a similar plot where it tracks Arthur from when he meets Guinevere and goes through kind of like his life and stuff. But I'm really excited like to continue with Idols of the King because I recently read The Holy Grail and I kind of enjoyed it. It was kind of a good tale. There are some bits where I was a bit like, oh, mm okay, like, which it contrasted Mallory's, like, interpretation, but I, I don't know, I feel like it could be really cool. But I'm also really excited to read The Once and Future King by T.H. White, because I feel like that will also provide quite a nice other interpretation of Arthurian literature. But Idols of the King really represents Arthur as a typical hero of the Victorian age, and so I'm really excited to, like, kind of analyze this further and comment on, kind of, the contemporary values that Tennyson installs in uh, his interpretation of Arthur, whilst Mallory kind of makes Arthur into a man of inaction near the end and promotes Lancelot as the man of chivalry. So it's very interesting to see the kind of dissonance between the two novels, well, the, between the two tales. Keeping on with this Arthurian thing, because I'm doing research for a series that I want to do on King Arthur, but it's also his intersection with Welsh mythology, of course, I have to read the Welsh classic, The Mabinogion, translated by Shauna Davis. We don't really know who the author is of The Mabinogion, but The Mabinogion is basically one of the major texts of Welsh. Welsh mythology and a Welsh classic. And basically Arthur does come into the Mabinogion through one of the tales of Cullachan Olwen, and it's kind of his very, very first kind of appearance. And it's very interesting. I haven't read it yet, but I will be. But I really want to read the Mabinogion anyway because of the Welsh mythology series that I want to do. It's I think it's going to be a young adult series, kind of like Percy Jackson-esque. And I did tweet about this the kind of like last year, talking about it, and a lot of people really wanted it. So like the King Arthur Welsh Mythology Intersection series. So I definitely think it'd be really interesting to do with this. And I'm really excited for it. But yeah, the Mabinogion has like dragons, witches, giants. It has a bunch of like rich culture and history centering in Wales. And so I'm really excited to read it. And basically also just being more in touch with like my own heritage as someone from Wales. Because a lot of people kind of think I'm American sometimes. And then some people think I'm just from England. But no, I'm Welsh and Jamaican mixed together. It's a very cool fusion. But yeah, I, I, I really want to read this. I think it would be really cool. It's like only like 200-ish pages as well, so it should be a fairly quick read. I do want another special edition, however. There's a version of the Mabinogion that's like this red hardback, like naked, and it just looks beautiful, and I feel like I will probably use this copy to like annotate and analyze, but then I want that copy of the Mabinogion for like pleasure and enjoyment. I know I shouldn't really be buying like multiple editions of books, especially given the fact that I have no more shelf space. However, I'm gonna do it anyway. 
anyway, I'm gonna do it anyway. The next series of classics that I want to read is one that I did mention actually in my last video, but one that I will mention again because I have all the copies, and that is Jane Austen's six major novels. So we have Sense and Sensibility, Sandition, Pride and Prejudice, Persuasion, Northanger Abbey, and Emma. I want to read all of them. I feel like Jane Austen is such a prolific author in the early 19th century that it would be a remiss for me not to read her at this point. However, I I kind of want to like preface what I'm saying with like, you don't have to read Austen to have read literature. I'm only doing it because one, I'm an English academic and I'm kind of studying this period already. And two, like I kind of just want to be able to discuss Austen with people and like see from my perspective what I think. Because I see every Everyone talking about Jane Austen all the time and I kind of get this fear of missing out. I just want to read it because I'm interested, um, but I will be doing a video tier ranking Austen and it should be fairly interesting. And plus I've seen so many like retellings of Austen and I think it'd be fairly cool to like do a short story retelling at some point, but yeah I just I'm fairly interested in Austen as an author and seeing like what she brings to the table in and of herself. I think the three that I'm fairly excited to read are Pride and Prejudice because this is like the basic Jane Austen novel that everyone knows and loves, or doesn't love depending, but I think it's it's gonna be really interesting to read and see what I think. The other one then is North Anger Abbey, purely because this is quite like a gothic, and so I'm very excited to read this kind of gothic romance and see what ensues. And then I'm really interested in Emma as well, purely because this kind of feels like a romantic comedy of sorts, so I'm fairly interested in seeing how Austen tackles a romantic comedy in the early 19th century. But yeah, that is basically Austen and what what I feel and what I want to do with that. And then we're leading on to books that I don't really own, like some of the books I don't really own yet, but still want to read. So the first two is Homer's Iliad and Odyssey. I'm interested in the Iliad purely because of the Song of Achilles, and that is the main story from which the Song of Achilles was inspired by, so I really want to read it and gather the source material. I also need it for novel research, for Wub Wub, so I'm really interested in the Iliad purely for that, and my friend Aisha is reading it at the moment, and she's kind of enjoying it. So I'm really, I'm really like excited to see kind of how I feel about the Iliad as well. And then I also want to read the Odyssey purely because um, Odysseus in Percy Jackson was fairly like cool. And I kind of want to read more about like Odysseus, like the long journey that he went on. And also I have an idea for like a sci-fi that is kind of inspired by an Odyssey. So I kind of want to read the Odyssey to see kind of like how everything in that kind of works and like pick apart the plot details and see how I can like remix it or be inspired by it for myself. I also feel like I want to read more classical literature in terms of that because, I don't know, I really want to expand my literature mindset because before starting booktube I was mainly reading like sci-fi and fantasy. I did never really expanded to like horror, literary fiction, classics, and now classical literature. However, because of booktube I really want to do that because not only is it a, a learning experience for me, it's also showing you that like someone who hasn't really read outside of his lane has started to read outside of his lane and it's completely okay to do so and explore different genres. Like I read romance and now I'm like fairly into the rom- well I'm not fairly into the romance genre, there are a lot of different bits of romance I haven't read yet, but will read. But I feel like it's a very much a cool experience to discover new genres and see if you actually do like them and go into them with an open mind. So I definitely want to read more outside my lane and see what things there are to discover and see what I actually like. Because if I like a bunch of books, one that will be very detrimental to my bank account and it will cry, but also too, it means that I could never be bored. Like, it means that I won't be bored reading fantasy all the time, because if I do get bored I can just switch to another genre. It's fairly interesting and I'm very excited by it. The next book that I do want to read then is Louisa May Alcott's Little Women. I have seen the film, I haven't read the book. I feel like I do need to read the book at this point just to gather the more of Louisa May Alcott's writing and see the nuance that she purveys within the literature. Um, I also need to read it for novel research as well, so it's kind kind of like a hand in hand kind of thing. So I will definitely be reading this before the end of the year. Um, and I'm just really, I'm really like interested in seeing how the film adapted the book and like whether it was a true and accurate representation. And I just love the Four March Sisters. And so it's it gonna be really exciting for me to read this and just see how Elcott represents Meg, Jo, Beth and Amy. And it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. I'm really excited for it. The next classic that I do then wanna read is actually Arthur Conan Doyle, Sherlock Holmes, because I watched 
Sherlock for the very first time last year, and now I'm interested in reading all the classics. So I kind of want to see how like Arthur Conan Doyle did the typical like detective mystery and uh, from the very outset, and then seeing kind of like how that's now led on to like the crime genre and like more detective novels, for example, like with Agatha Christie and stuff. So I'm really interested in that, and also because I also maybe want to write a detective mystery next year at some point, inspired by The Great Gatsby and stuff. So yeah, I feel like it'd be really awesome. I'm really interested in Sherlock and seeing how it kind of was written at its time instead of seeing a contemporary remix via Sherlock on BBC. I think I've got a few of Conan Doyle's editions. I just wanted to show Study in Scarlet, but I think I'm going to collect them all and then maybe do a reading vlog of them all. This has kind of given me a lot of video ideas. However, there are only 52 weeks in a year, which means I only have 52 videos unless I start doubling down, which I probably won't be able to do until like next year. So yeah, the next classic that I then want to read is Daphne du Maurier's Rebecca, but also I also want to read her one Jamaica in, purely from the title, and yeah, but Rebecca. Jack Edwards and also my friend Victoria have gotten on me for the longest time to read Rebecca, and I will do it soon besties, I promise you. I just need time to like get myself in the right headspace to read this, but I feel like this gives gothic vibes from like the very outset, and so I'm very interested in it. I just can't wait to read it, and I think it's gonna be really awesome. I don't know when I'll read it, maybe for like a gothic vlog next year for Halloween. I feel like that'd be pretty awesome. The next classics that I then wanna read are actually two uh, of like the first-ish books, and that is Cervantes's Don Quixote and Wu Cheng's Journey to the West, and both of these were like very, very first novels published within their respective countries, and Journey to the West is regarded as one of the greatest great works of Chinese literature, and so I'm very excited to be reading that, but also Don Quixote, it's very interesting to see kind of how Don Quixote um, has the early formations of the novel, even though the novel wasn't made until the 18th century, and so I'm very interested to read both of them and see kind of how the prose, uh, is formed through both of these respective novels. Next classic that I then want to read is Gabriel Garcia Marquez's A Hundred Years of Solitude. This one is purely because a lot of you have recommended this to me so many times now that I literally want to read it, and just following like seven generations of the Wendia family really sounds like interesting to me because I've never really read like a family generational story before, but just the title A Hundred Years of Solitude immediately captures my attention, and so I'm really excited to read it and see what happens with it. It's also considered Garcia Marquez's magnum opus, so it'd be really interesting to read and see kind of how this is his great work as well. And then the final classic that I then want to read is one that my older sister read uh, quite recently and I listened to a bit of the audiobook of, and that's Charles Dickens's Great Expectations. It's literally just because my sister read it and now I want to read it just so I can discuss it with her, but also I feel like Great Expectations is one of those novels that kind of summarises kind of classical literature, like one of those like great works of classical literature that I've heard from other people, and so I feel like reading Great Expectations and seeing kind of the lessons that a lot of people have gathered from that would be very interesting to see, and also very interesting to witness as well, and just kind of gather some thoughts about how classical literature was formed, and also the political commentaries that Charles Dickens was making at the time, because Dickens was very political, I believe. But yeah, that is basically the, I don't even know how many books that is, but we have 1, 2, 3, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. We have 19 to 20 classical novels that I want to read. If you have any classics that you want to read, let me know in the comment section down below because I would love to know and love to get some more recommendations of classics that I should read. And again, a massive thank you to Anna Louisa for sponsoring today's video. You can go to shop.analouisa.com forward slash fictional fates and use code fictional fates 10 for 10% off your order. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, be sure to click that subscribe button so that you're notified whenever I upload now. Next. If you want to check out any of my social media platforms, I'll have them all linked in the description down below for you. Plus, I have my coffee page which you can use to send a well appreciated tip which helps support this channel further. And yeah, I'm really excited to continue on reading different genres of literature re and just expanding my mindset with how amazing literature can be. And yeah, I'm very, very excited. Um, so yeah, I guess until the next time. Bye besties.